And welcome back to another episode of my survival series on the Shattered Skies server. So it's been a little bit uh, since my last uh, weekly whip report and uh, have some new works in progress and uh, some other news. Yeah, I guess uh, the Frawl, the giant circular ship with the two major cannons, uh, that's, that's gone, Zord. Uh, it wasn't very effective in battle, so I deleted it, and it was the turrets were being a pain. Here you can see I've done a bunch of ugly upgrading to the Eclipse um, to make it a little bit more pirate capable. I was wanting to harvest some black advanced armor and some piratey bits. So it's gone from a complete state back into a work in progress state. Um, have kind of etched some pieces out here, getting the general shape of the engines back and things like that. I'll, uh, I'll come back to this and, and finish it off. Part of me kind of wants to scrap it completely, though, mostly because I don't really like the fact that the salvage guns have such a wide gap in the middle. And I think what I might do is make an asymmetrical build and put all of the salvaging on one side of the ship. Because having this asymmetrical, or having this symmetrical salvage shape with this giant hole in the middle means that I'm usually only utilizing half of the salvage beams at any point in time unless I'm harvesting something that's really large, uh, really high mass asteroids, at least for a little bit and things like that. So moving on over here to the catalyst, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and get a core set up so we can move around a little bit faster. The catalyst, you can see, is uh, the Gatling gun has been removed from the top portion and the incredibly huge number of mass enhancers that I have on it, the unnecessarily large number. And it doesn't look like our core spawned in. Let's try again. Might be hitting, there we go. Little bits of server lag, there's quite a few people on right now, so... Okay, so I've removed the large uh, Uber, or one of the Uber cannons from it, and replaced it with this pod up top, which is now a capital ship missile pod. Uh, it's currently loaded with a single 2 million damage uh, lock-on missile, and then it's got, I believe, 24 uh, large ion missile arrays that are in there as well um, that are also lock-on but do not have the extended range that the uh, the ion or the standard lock-on missile has. I think I might have pulse on there too either pulse or no I'm I think I was gonna put explosive that's it but it's got a lot of room I'm still working the the power out on it you can see that power runs quite a ways back on it the disadvantage, actually, that I find of this missile turret versus the Gatling gun is that the Gatling gun technically has two sources of power. So it's got, or three, it's got its own power inside the cannon barrels. Uh, it's got additional power in the mass enhancer unit, which is what I use to, to rotate it with because it sits on a, a rotating dock. And then a turret dock attaches the actual gun portion to that. And then it has the mothership's power. Currently, the missile pod only has its own power and the mothership's power. So this extra portion that is needlessly huge on the Gatling gun actually does a pretty good service of providing additional power because power runs up the chain. So power, the mothership will supply power to this unit, which will supply power to this unit when this one runs out. So... The missile turret is a little bit more power hungry. I might do uh, push it out a little bit and then add an additional power stack to the back of the missile turret. But uh, as a work in progress, it's just uh, another another step in the road. Uh, I was really highly considering scrapping this ship for a little bit. Uh, I've since kind of recanted on some of that, I put a little bit of salvage up front. I'm not 100% sold on it, except that it's effective. 
against large targets, it does its job. It doesn't look very good, and it's big, and everything is kind of turret-based. It doesn't have a very good primary weapon. But as a support ship, I've gotten to run a couple of uh, a couple of flights with some other people, and with other people in you know cruisers or heavy fighters, uh, this works really really well as a frigate to deal high damage to single large target ships. So I I do kind of like that, and I'm so far I've decided to keep it obviously and continue working on it. Uh, at some point, I am going to go through and greeble the outside and finish up the outside and the engine portion, get the rest of the turret slapped on it. But for now, it was mostly just experiments in the modular weapon design. I wouldn't mind having a rack of different weapons that I can fit into this thing. So, Moving right along, uh, over here, we've got my torpedo bomber. Uh, unfortunately, I've, I've lost a couple of hours of work on this. It was actually about 90% complete. And I took it out pirate hunting and got like two tiny holes in it and thought that I would just respawn it from the blueprint. And realized that I did not save a blueprint before I went pirate hunting, so that's a big dope on my part. But I wanted to build something asymmetrical. Uh, I wanted it to be, you know, a little bit different, a little bit inspired from some Wing Commander series like Drothi type ships, uh, which are the Kilrothi kind of heavy fighters. So... Uh, let's see, it originally in this bay had a large separate capital ship missile uh, that was like a straight up torpedo warhead AI module. Uh, I've since taken that out because once I was, I was just about getting it kind of to the point where it would fire and use push pulse to carry itself around and track enemies. Uh, I don't know if it was just because I didn't put a faction module on it or what the problem was. But uh, last time I fired it, it turned around and started chasing me. And it had like, I think it had about 15 warheads on the front of it. So I did not want to get hit, so I took it off. And replaced it with a higher number of shield, rechargers, and capacitors. It has two pulse ion missiles and a fairly large Gatling machine gun. Uh, it's made as a, like I said, kind of a torpedo bomber. It's made to go in after uh, larger ships, uh, ships that are bigger than it is. I don't remember what the current damage is on those missiles. I think they're about 20% ion. Let's see. I haven't been in this ship for a minute, so... Uh, let's see. It's 40% pulse, 30% ion... And 110,000 damage each. Um, so, <clears throat> and they are on separate systems so that I can keep from using all of my power at once. And since they have such a long recharge rate, I did not want to constantly be on the downturn. If I can split that downturn in half by firing one at a time, then great. So it's a it's about a cruiser class at this point. I would consider it kind of a heavy bomber, but it kind of got uh, a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and then, you know, that happened. So, that's my torpedo bomber. Now, the last uh, item that I have to show off for this week's uh, whip report is down here, and it's going to be the long haul work in progress project. It's the project that I'm going to spend forever on. And this is its engine room. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest, like, just core rooms that I've ever built. Actually, it is, in fact, the biggest core room that I've ever built. Uh, and its current size already matches the... Catalyst frigate. So each of these, I made one of these purple reactors last night. They are, in fact, I think one of these is still running. Let's see it here in a second, maybe. I know one of them's running. There it is. It's actually a power supply reactor. 
Uh, five of them are currently turned off because I didn't want the beam clipping. This part right here bugs the crap out of me where beams clip out for a half second. Absolutely destroys me. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I do have them on a logic system to turn off. They are power supply beams. They supply right up about to 500,000 power a second each. And there are currently six of them docked in this engine room. So that's an additional 3 million power uh, per second, approximately, that this ship will be able to maintain on top of whatever else gets thrown in here. Uh, and then I've got this kind of sphere bit. I may make that top portion rotate. I'm not sure yet. I'm not 100% happy with how rotation works on a server because it gets kind of laggy. But... It is, uh, it is what it is, you know. I am really, really happy with how these reactors turned out, though. I did, uh, I did kind of steal the idea for the uh, fuel rods. And I don't have that player's name on hand that I stole it from. Um, but I thought they were really pretty. And I don't really consider it as much stealing when you use just a little portion of something as it is more artistic inspiration. Uh, that was really inspiring to see, and in fact, it, it took me a little while to get it just right and to figure it out, uh, because that's the, uh, what, Bastion Crystal? No, Bastion's green, isn't it? Do I have any on me? Yeah. That's the Hotel Crystal, and then instead of, uh, glass, it's actually green crystal armor, so the light behind that green crystal armor really gives it that kind of sickly nuclear glow. Uh, I threw some build blocks as well, because I didn't want to just use the uh, hazard blocks. I wanted to use some build blocks down there to give it kind of kind of that feeling. I probably should have put maybe some computers or something on there, just to get like your status readouts or something. But, yep, that's the, uh, that's the power reactors. So, bumping into my sphere here. Other than that, uh, not a lot of work on the main space station other than this, uh, this extension here for the gun rack. And this room here was kind of my experimental room because I was launching torpedoes that used push pulses uh, to self-propel themselves. I wanted to make sure I had a room that I could access with a small ship. Ooh, sorry guys. And at the same time, have something that I could dock a ship and fire dummy missiles at the wall so that they would not travel forever. I did lose two of them, I think, of the probably 20 or so different prototypes. I spent an entire day making torpedo missiles and testing that with the torpedo bomber. And it just never came out the way that I wanted it to. And so, uh, that said... I do like the Torpedo Bomber in its current configuration. It's not bad. I do wish I could carry a capital ship missile on it so that it could act like a real Torpedo Bomber to help support a fleet, to have a nice to have a smaller ship that can fly in but still deal a, a massive amount of damage to a capital ship. I was kind of thinking about putting like two of the torpedoes on there. And look at that. Um... Starside Podcast is currently being recorded as well. So another glorious thing about uh, the Starside server is the fact that there are events like this that are going on. I don't have anything that's nice enough, really, and 222 is about five or six jumps from where I am right now. If I, uh, I don't know, I'm, if I could get a jump drive on, well, yeah, no, 60 seconds, I, uh, I don't know that I'm really going to be doing that, um, so, I was thinking about putting a jump drive on one of my power reactors, and try to get to 222 with it, 
because I am really proud of this power reactor. It's one of the nicer things I've built, other than uh, a couple of ships from this from my days on a uh, prior server. So, which I haven't spawned any of those in. I was kind of thinking about bringing one of them in, but it's not. It's pretty, but it's not optimized at all. Like it's. It was back when I didn't really know a whole lot about the different systems and how they work together. I knew about power and I knew, you know, how to get a good power supply. But as far as getting weapon configurations down, it's pretty terrible. So I don't think I'm going to be spawning any of that in. That and it's just nice to start over on a new server and, and do everything here. But just to get a sense of scale... These, these reactors, I believe, are 37 meters uh, width and length, and uh, 51 high. So, that is an awfully large reactor. They've, some of them still have cameras on them from when I was flying them around, so... It wouldn't be the whip report if things were complete, would it? Uh, I may actually do little showcase videos of completed ships uh, that I've done. That way I can do a more dedicated uh, video for each ship. But that's, you know, if I get anything done. Which may or may not ever happen, because I'm a work in prog progress kind of person. So, my last capital ship I spent about two months on. And I got it about three-fourths of the way complete. Probably more than that. It was probably like... 80 or 90 percent done it really just needed to be colored and a couple of interior rooms finished off but then i abandoned it mostly because i switched servers and then rails came out and that other ship has like 50 docked entities to it that it just is a nightmare i've spawned it into single player and lagged the crap out of my single player game as well so instead I have a giant reactor. I built a giant reactor for no other reason than I just kind of wanted to play around with power supply and then got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I said, well, I'll just make a docked reactor just to have. Like, maybe I'll use it for something else. And then it turned into more of an art project. And then I ended up with a finished docked reactor and said, well, now I've got to build a ship around this. So I spawned five more of them in because one's never enough. And that's where we are for now. So I think that'll do it for my weekly whips. Uh, this has been the Quantum Quasar on the Shattered Skies Star Maid server. Come check us out if you want. And I hope you all have a wonderful journey out there. So if you do end up in the Shattered Skies server, drop by, say hello. Uh, hit me up in chat. I can help you find your way around. Uh, server's getting pretty big pretty fast, so it's getting interesting. But yeah, safe flying out there. Take care, everyone.